I am Andrew Ryan, and I'm here to ask you a question. Is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow? No, says the man in Washington, it belongs to the poor. No, says the man in the Vatican, it belongs to God. No, says the man in Moscow, it belongs to everyone. I rejected those answers. Instead, I chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose rapture. The artist would not fear the censor, where the scientist would not be bound by petty morality, where the great would not be constrained by the small. And with the sweat of your brow, rapture can become your city as well. You can taste it, can't you? Andrew Ryan. A worm looks up and sees the face of God. But look around. It's a regular convention of worms in here. They all had mothers, fathers, people who loved them. They got married, fucked their wives. What makes you think you're any different? I haven't chosen the spot for you on the wall yet. Let me know if you have a preference. I believe in no God, no invisible man in the sky. But there is something more powerful than each of us. A combination of our efforts. A great chain of industry that unites us. But it is only when we struggle in our own interest that the chain pulls society in the right direction. The chain is too powerful and too mysterious for any government to guide. Any man who tells you different either has his hand in your pocket or a pistol to your neck. On the surface, the parasite expects the doctor to heal them for free, the farmer to feed them out of charity. How little they differ from the pervert who prowls the streets looking for a victim he can ravish for his grotesque amusement. Is there blood in the streets? Of course. Have some chosen to destroy themselves with careless splicing, undeniable. But I will make no proclamations. I will dictate no laws. The great chain moves slowly, but with wisdom. It is our impatience that invites in the parasite of big government. And once you've invited it in, it will never stop feeding on the body of the city. To build a city at the bottom of the sea, insanity. But where else could we be free from the clutching hand of the parasites? Where else could we build an economy that they would not try to control? A society that they would not try to destroy? It was not impossible to build rapture at the bottom of the sea. It was impossible to build it anywhere else. Dr. Su Chong, frankly, I'm shocked by your proposal. If we were to modify the structure of our commercial plasmid line as you propose, to have them make the user vulnerable to mental suggestion through pheromones, would we not be able to effectively control the actions of the citizens of Rapture? Free will is the cornerstone of this city. The thought of sacrificing it is abhorrent. However, we are indeed in a time of war. If Atlas and his bandits have their way, will they not turn us into slaves? And what will become a free will then? Desperate times call for desperate measures. The death penalty and rapture. Councils in an uproar. Rights in the streets, they say. But this is the time for leadership. Action must be taken against the smugglers. Any contact with the surface exposes rapture to the very parasites we fled from. If you stretch necks or a small price to pay for our ordeals. What is the difference between a man and a parasite? A man builds, a parasite asks, where is my share? A man creates, a parasite says, what will the neighbors think? A man invents, a parasite says, watch out or you might tread on the toes of God. Imagine the will 
it took to create a place like this. And what have you built? Nothing. You can only loot and break. You're not a man. You're just a termite at her side. I see Cohen's lost his touch. If you knew him when. When he used to believe in the work. In the struggle. And now... He rots in that Neverland, waiting for someone to come and tell him he still got it. I suppose that's why he let you live. Before the final rat has eaten the last gram of you, Rapture will have returned. I will lead a parade. Who was that, they'll say, as they point to the sad shape hanging on my wall. Who was that? There has been tremendous pressure to regulate this plasmid business. There have been side effects, blindness, insanity, death. But what use is our ideology if it is not tested? The market does not respond like an infant, shrieking at the first sign of displeasure. The market is patient, and we must be too. This Fontaine fellow is somebody to watch. Once he was just a menace to be convicted and hung. But he always manages to be where the evidence isn't. He's the most dangerous type of hoodlum. The kind with vision. Diane, my dear, I'm sorry, but I'll be late again tonight. Rosenberg is demanding to speak about this Fontaine business. I'm trying to build a proper financial market, and this idiot keeps going on about Adam this, genetic modification, that... I'll go spend an hour pretending to pay attention to the poor fellow and be home as soon as I can, Andre. Something must be done about Fontaine. While I was buying buildings and fish futures, he was cornering the market on genotypes and nucleotide sequences. Rapture is transforming before my eyes. The great chain is pulling away from me. Perhaps it's time to give it a toe.